And joining us now, Ontario's former finance minister, Janet Ecker, now president of the Toronto Financial Services Alliance. Welcome back to TVO. Pleased to be back. I'm going to show you a list of cities, and then I'm going to ask you a question. Michael, if you would, let's put these up. The world's top 13 financial centers, according to Z slash Yen Group, the Global Financial Centers Index 6. London, New York, Hong Kong, Singapore, Shenzhen, Zurich, Tokyo, Chicago, still no Canadians, Geneva, Shanghai, Sydney, Frankfurt, Toronto, number 13. What's wrong with this picture? Well, we are there in that top 15. We've consistently been there in that top 15. And what we want to do is get into the top 10, and we think that's doable. Toronto dropped from, I gather, 11th to 13th in March of 2009. Any idea what caused that drop? Well, the rankings, I mean, this is an index, right? right. So, it, you know, and indexes go up, indexes go down. Didn't come down from Mount Sinai. We get that. No, no, I understand that. Yeah. But it's been a really good um, index because what it has done, the research that underpins it, has given, I think, a lot of cities uh, that are looking to build their financial services sector a lot of good advice in terms of how to do it. So you have New York and London who are, like, way out there in terms of the scores, way above everybody else. And and then you have a cluster of cities, Toronto is one of them, that are kind of duking it out uh, for staying up there in that top 15. So what we're doing is, it's nice to sort of see where you are on the index, but what we think is important is that one, Toronto is up in, in that big gang, if you will. Two, that it is showing that we have a lot of strengths that we can capitalize on so that we can be even stronger as a financial global hub. For Canadians, for Ontarians, for people in the Toronto region, you say, well, why do they care? And I think they need to care because these are the kinds of good, solid jobs that helps promote quality of life in the city and also uh, economic growth in the city because our financial sector has been very, very strong. It's weathered the economic downturn here in Canada, uh, and I think it's a sector that can grow at an even faster clip if we, if we get the, the policies and the supports right. Would it really be that big a deal going from 13th to 10th? That would make a difference? Well, listen, it makes a difference for all the marketers. Uh, what I think makes a big difference for, for Toronto region is more jobs, more economic growth, more good quality jobs and companies that pay taxes and support a lot of things like Sick Kids, United Way, uh, so many of the cultural things that go on in, in this town. Uh, the financial companies are big supporters of that. So it's, uh, there's, a, there's a good benefit for the region. The Toronto Financial Services Working Group got Boston Consulting, as you know, to develop a plan to make Toronto a financial leader. And I wonder if you could share with our viewers, what were the competitive advantages that the report said Toronto had to offer in this sector? Well, there's a couple of things. Uh, first of all, we have a good quality of life. We have a good talent base, a talent base that has diversity, uh, that has good skills, that has good openness to different cultures, that has good ties around the world. Secondly, we have a, a banking sector that it has been recognized as one of the, the safest and soundest uh, in the world, two years running. Uh, we also have a good ability in the pension area, some world leaders in pension strength. We've got some great strengths in energy, mining, and uh, um, uh, resources financing, which is another very good strength that we have. And the other piece that uh, the report is highlighting is the fact that the world has noticed that our financial system did not have the, uh, the meltdown that others did. And one of the reasons for that is because we have a different approach to managing risk, approaching risk. Uh, We're a little conservative, yeah. aren't we? We're just a little conservative. We don't mind regulation. No, well, and we don't mind being conservative in how we approach it. And so some people have criticized our, our sector as being stodgy or uh, or whatever, but uh, stodgy obviously works. Not uh, a bad thing when the rest of the world's melting down. It's not a bad thing. So, uh, so there's a lot of strengths and we think even more we can build on. Here's what uh, Boston Consulting said in terms of how Toronto can become a leader. Four point plan. Establish the leading global institute for integrative risk management. Entrench Toronto's position as the leading global hub for energy mining and metal trading, as you just suggested. Become a global leader in retirement finance. Grow skilled financial service activity clusters. Uh, Janet, let's unpack this a little bit. A risk management institute. 
What is that? What would it do? Well, what we want to do is capitalize on our expertise in risk and be a global leader in terms of thinking about risk, researching risk, training and educating people to manage risk within the financial services sector. So it would be a support not just for uh, regulators, but also for companies themselves that need good quality talent that looks at how to manage risk. And as we've seen uh, in other countries, you can see what happens for all of us uh, when companies get carried away with themselves and are not analyzing recognizing and managing risk the way they need to. Does the rest of the world really look at Canada now and say, those guys actually know how to manage risk better. Look how they're standing on their feet now. Or is that just us, you know, patting ourselves on the back because we did come through it better than most? Well, I think it's not just us. It's the World Economic Forum twice in a row. It's President Obama. Uh, it was Ireland when they were looking for a model for how to re-regulate their sector. Uh, so there's been a, <clears throat> excuse me, a fair degree of, of global recognition of the fact that why are our banks still standing? when others aren't. So that doesn't mean, and I think it's really important to also recognize that no one here is saying, wow, aren't we wonderful, and you know, aren't we smug, and gee, you know, we dodged the bullet, and nah, 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 on you. No one is saying that. Uh, what we are recognizing is that there is strength in the business culture in terms of how we approach things, the business model, and in regulation, and the fact that, that we keep more, if you will, capital cushion, more money in the bank for a rainy day than other jurisdictions did, to boil it down to its simplest. There are a lot of reasons why. So that is something where we're being recognized as having something to teach the rest of the world. Grow skilled financial service activity <laughs> clusters. What's a financial cluster? Yeah, that's right. Basically what that means is getting more global players to locate operations here. So that's everything from consulting, legal, technology, um, uh, customer service, wealth management. Uh, we have a good value proposition here. We need to just basically bang on their doors, make sure they know we have that value proposition so we can have more of those jobs here in this area. Do we need to allow foreign banks to buy up the domestic banking business here or a bigger chunk of the domestic banking business? No, I don't think we need to do that. Um, and I think there are lots of reasons why global players have come here. Again, getting back to the quality of the workforce, uh, the ability to, to manage global operations from this location. So there's a lot of things that, that we have to offer. And what we want to do is be more focused, strategic, and more aggressive, very un-Canadian thing to mm. say, I'm more aggressive about making sure that people know that. Because that has been one of the things that we did learn from the global, the, the index, uh, Financial Centers Index, was that there was not a lot of awareness of Toronto as a financial hub. And quite frankly, there wasn't even a lot of awareness within Toronto region or Canada or governments that we were as strong as we are and that we had the potential to be even better. Before so. the Great Recession, we had Henny Sender, who's a great reporter from the Financial Times on this program, and I, you know, we did a story on New York, London, Hong Kong as the big centers, and I asked her, mm -hmm. how far behind are we? And she kind of laughed at me. She said, nobody thinks of Toronto as a financial banking capital or any kind of financial sector capital in this world. Maybe you do, but the rest of the world doesn't. We get a long way to go here, I presume, don't we? Well, we have a ways to go, but frankly, the fact that uh, uh, when we showed up on the first index, they themselves were very surprised at what the research and surveys and things said, that all of a sudden there we were, and they actually said that in their report, that they were surprised that we were there. But I think what it has done is it has awakened in a lot of people uh, the idea that we do have a strength here, we have a sector that has withstood the economic uh, uh, downturn, uh, that has the ability to support and grow more jobs growth, et cetera, here. Do we have and the skilled people to handle, to fill those jobs? If, if this, I mean, the report talks about creating 20,000 jobs. Have we got the people with the skills to fill those jobs? Well, part of, part of the strategy that's recommended here is to actually make sure that we are attracting best and brightest talent, both in terms of people here uh, going into financial sec the financial sector, but also attracting talent from around the world. And again, what you're seeing is that a lot of people are looking at us in a way that they hadn't done before. Now, there's no question that um, you know, this is a, a one window. And we have to, uh, you know, it can't just be because we withstood the economic shocks. There has to be a lot of work done in terms of the value proposition that we are putting in the window. But I think from when you look at Ontario's economy, when you look at the fact that we have lost our manufacturing base, that it has been declining uh, some 3%, over 3% a year, uh, when uh, the financial sector has been growing over 4% a year, we have to have those jobs for uh, Torontonians, for Ontarians, for Canadians. 
we got we have to have them somewhere and this is a sector that has the potential to continue to provide jobs here and that's a good thing for all of us all that having been said the Toronto homecoming working group recently released a report that said that Toronto expatriates like this city but that the city doesn't provide them with the professional opportunities that they want these are Torontonians saying that if if we're having trouble convincing Torontonians to to feel bullish about this place, how do we convince the rest of the world this is the place to come? Well, it's a very good question, and our ex expats have to be part of taking the message out that this can be a good place to do business. Now, do we have issues we have to deal with? Absolutely. But I think that uh, sitting around saying, woe was me, is not going to get us anywhere either. This is a sector that can provide good jobs. We need those jobs. And I think what the Boston Consulting Report has recommended uh, is a strategy that will help capitalize on that. It's not the only thing that we should be doing. Obviously, Ontario has a diverse economy. We want to keep that. But when you look at the fact that it's pr provided uh, uh, almost a quarter of the GDP, 12% of the jobs, you know, there's some 350,000 people people now who are working as part of the financial sector, both directly in companies as lawyers, consulting, IT. It's a very, very broad reach in this town. We need to keep those jobs and we need more of them. Okay, again, one of the points they made, Toronto's position can be a leading hub for energy mining and metal trading. And I, I would have thought that that's Western Canada, isn't it? How does that help how does that help us here? Well, it's the listings on the stock exchange, for example. It's the business analysts. It's the experts in financing, the experts in mining, for example, in energy, uh, the experts in green technology that we're starting to build here. So there's a number of things that uh, are attracting attention and that we think uh, working with uh, the TMX, for example, uh, that uh, uh, we can be better and have more listings here. So more companies globally would be prepared to list here. And it also just helps the business community here in town as well. Now, you got a million dollars from the Premier, right? Dalton McGinty gave your group a million bucks to get started? Well, the, the, yes, the Ontario yeah. government has put a uh, million dollars in as seed money for the research and the staffing and the, and the work that needs to be done on this. Uh, the sector is also contributing. The city is contributing. Uh, the financial, uh, the federal government has also been contributing. Uh, so it's a part, public-private partnership. And again, what uh, the Boston Consulting Group recommended when they looked around the world and found what global centers have been able to capitalize on uh, growing financial jobs, it was that public-private sector partnership that made it work. I think the other thing that, that also should be mentioned here too is that a lot of those financial jobs don't have to be here. In the day of, you know, when you sort of have a have an, an internet connection and a phone line, uh, you know, you can, you can do a lot of these jobs anywhere in the world. And a lot of jurisdictions would like to have more financial services jobs there. So even if you don't think we can be some great global hub, so, you know, even if someone's a cynic and, and that's fine, we need to be on our game to keep the jobs that we have here in, in the Toronto region. And just finally, how many people are teasing you about the fact that you, the former Conservative Finance Minister in Ontario, now seem to be best buddies with the current Liberal Finance Minister in Ontario? Well, at the end of the day, um, what uh, what I want for this city and this province is good quality jobs for all of us. That was one of the things when I was in government that our government was was trying to do. Uh, Minister Duncan has uh, publicly said that this is a sector that can provide good quality jobs for Ontarians. He wants to be elected here, and, and so he's very committed to this, as is the Premier. So uh, I think uh, at the end of the day, a lot of people that go into politics go in because they want to make a positive difference for uh, the communities that they represent, and um, he does, I do, and so, hey, on this particular file, we are in agreement. So you'll be endorsing them next time out? Uh, well, I don't know if I'm going to be doing any partisan things. I did gotcha. that partisan thing, Steve. Just checking, just no, checking. But listen, I think, uh, um, you know, I'm working with a sector that needs to work with the government, and uh, we have an alignment on more jobs here in this region. Good enough. Janet Ecker, thanks for visiting us at TVO tonight. Thank you very much.